Okay, so if we were really explaining to somebody how to sit down with whiskey and drink it, the correct way to get the most out of it, how do we do this? So, okay, now you will absolutely, if you can find even three different shaped glasses, you will absolutely find they change the flavor of the whiskey. Okay. Um, I would say generally, a basic tulip shape, you're gonna be better off. And so a big wide mouth glass, you won't get hardly any nose out of that. You want something with a narrow opening and something that sort of keeps the essence of the whiskey in the glass until you're ready to smell it and sip it. Now, pour yourself a whiskey. Sure. How much? How much am I pouring here? I always try to pour small amounts, maybe an ounce. Yeah. If you fill the glass all the way to the brim, one, you won't leave anywhere for the alcohol vapors to kind of come out of the whiskey. Right. And two, you won't be able to try a second whiskey. If the whiskey feels sharp to your nose, you're too close. Hmm. Back off a eighth to a quarter of an inch right right so find the place where to you it's like mm, that's good and if it gets sharp back it up a little bit you don't want to just live in the glass because what you're doing actually if you do that is overwhelming your sinus cavity with alcohol vapors mm. and you're also not giving your brain a chance to decipher what's happening because every inhale you're introducing new data so acclimating and you want yeah. to still stay stay kind of fresh so you can pick out the right. nuances All right. so you want to be able to get it up there take a smell and then pull it away and try to think, you know, just for a split second, think about what you're experiencing there, then bring it back. And you just want to take breaths, like a full exhale in between smells. If you inhale with your mouth open as well, then, uh, and you smell the whiskey at the same time, you're allowing the alcohol vapors to go through your sinus cavity instead of build up in your sinus and cavity. It's with my mouth open or simultaneously breathing in through my mouth and my nose? Both. Okay. It'll change both. Now you can also smell with your mouth closed, you'll also learn something different about the whiskey. Sure. When you pour a glass of whiskey, if you just fill it with whiskey and you got all these vapors evaporating and it's agitated and you shove your nose in there, sure. you're not gonna get a fair assessment of the whiskey. You want it to relax, rest. So then we take our first sip. Yeah. Now I always like to personally, yeah. how do you taste whiskey? All the ways. All the right? ways. Well, so, and again, um, some people who are super, super new to whiskey, they've either had cocktails, mm -hmm. which you can drink pretty aggressively, or they've just been shooting alcohol. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not what we do. You're not trying to overcome this. You're trying to explore this. So your first sip, just take a sip. Don't mess with it. Don't be crazy. Just take a sip and see if you enjoy it or not. Yeah, and the way that I compare it is the, the same way you would sip a really, really hot coffee. Just the tiniest little sip there. Time. The first sip, I just take a sip and I don't mess with it. Make a chewing motion with your mouth and count to as old as the whiskey is. Now, don't swish your tongue. Don't swish it like gargle it. Just move it around. Now, you'll notice that totally changed that whiskey. Yeah. What you've actually done is you've created the reaction to heat in your mouth instead of in your throat. And so now when you swallow, you shouldn't have any of that, oh, that burns because all that burning feeling, that all happened in the mouth instead of the throat. Right. So you won't feel it just burning as it goes down the same way. Now the last way is if you're serious, there's a couple of ways. There's a way where you can just let it sit on your tongue to the count of 10 and not move. And what that does is it just sort of blows your tongue out a little bit, but it will change the flavor of the whiskey. Um, and the other way is you really can swish it around in your mouth. Uh, people who taste for a living, who are used to high proof alcohol in their, they will do that and it, they're fine with it. It doesn't totally ruin everything mm -hmm. for them. Last, why water? We would add water to release some of the things that age has brought into a whiskey and kind of open it up a little bit. Uh, the first couple of drops will make it more aggressive, not less aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, because you're actually shoving all the oil, non uh, water soluble content to the top. Yeah. And then that's your next sip. Um, and then after that, uh, it'll get lighter. And then the more water you add, the lighter it gets. Add ice to smooth it out, but you'll also water it down at the same time. Okay, that's all, that's all well and good. I'm gonna teach you something. Ah. But really, the advanced level drinking. Uh -huh. You said something that I found, uh, I found very important. Talking about aeration, if we could get those same vapors 
to not get thrown into the air haphazardly, but put into a jet stream. <laughs> oh Lord! Oh no! I think this is bad. I think we could we could be onto something. <laughs> so this is an advanced tasting method. You don't seem too excited about no, it. No, I have no idea what's gonna happen here, but I know I'm not gonna like it. You look it. very concerned, Daniel. I'm super concerned. What do you think? I feel like this is gonna involve like a shop vac or something. A shop vac? Yeah. You think I'm some kind of hack? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where are you going? That is a big ass leaf blower. You ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, what I do for you, you don't even know. You don't even know what I do for you. <laughs> First, I have to make sure there's enough pressure that we get a good jet stream of whiskey into Daniel's mouth so we can get the maximum flavor. Are you prepared for maximum flavor? Well, so did that. Uh... I feel like I got uh, new hints of gasoline and uh, a dash of self loathing. <laughs> I can feel Tullamore Dew draining down behind my ears. <laughs> All right, so back to business. Where are we, Daniel? We're on our own uh, concrete plat for our distillery. Which is kind of Technically, a big deal. You're, there's a wall between us right now. There's always Rex. a wall, like emotionally. An there's... emotional wall. <laughs> <laughs> we just have a concrete slab here for a couple of weeks. In the meantime, we wanted to give a basic outline and get your ideas for what would make a cool bar. Let's see if I can still draw a straight line. So we're in the tasting room right now. It's roughly, this is the outside edge. And it goes out about 10 feet. But this is our bar. And I was thinking maybe like a hammered copper top or something, but really, we're open to any suggestions. I totally offered to be jet streamed, but Daniel didn't want to waste, waste a whiskey. Yeah. Which I don't see it as a waste. I think it's the way you fully experience all of those nuanced notes. <coughs> They're still trickling down the back of my throat. <laughs> That's the episode. And we don't have enough of a mess, but uh, I still think I need to yell at somebody. What do you think? I think so. I'm like an artist. There's people. We have. Oh, we've got people. We have an audience. This time, you sip it and you just keep it in the lip like a piece of chew. Yeah, huh? That's right. <laughs>